Alright, so which type of Urquan are we going to take down now? Well, I guess it's going to be the Kazerza. Uh, I'm just going to save the game and converse with them. What? A human in a precursor service vehicle. How did you escape the slave shield, human? Or are you a rogue? Well, since we have the option, we might as well use the words and find out why the Kazerza are doing what they're doing. Alien, you have spoken words, and you have spoken them rightly. We will tell you our reasons why we enslave all other sentient life. We evolved on a hostile world, the descendants of solitary hunters. In those ancient days, there was no Kora or Kazerza, only the Urquan. We explored our world, and then the space beyond. Here we met the six races of the sentient milieu, which we joined as partners. It was on a routine planet fall that one of our milieu scout ships first met the Dinyari. They were evilly intelligent creatures who could control the minds of others. They wanted to rule the universe. We had no choice but to give it to them. For thousands of years, we were unthinking slaves to the Dinyari. The Dinyari had a special liking for us Urguan. So they began to tinker with our genes. They built two Urquan sub-races. One green, the thinkers and planners. The other black, the warriors and laborers. When the martyr king Kazerza gave us the secret to defeating the Dinyari. We destroyed them. Then we decided that we would never again be slaves. We would follow the path of now and forever. We decided to enslave or imprison all other intelligent life in the galaxy. We had slave shielded one world when we learned that the Black Urquan, under a new leader, Gora, had devised the Eternal Doctrine, which called for the cleansing. The annihilation of all non-Urquan sentient life. Before we could stop them, they burned the Yuktar race's home world and were on their way to the planet of the last remaining free race. We met the Gora in orbit above that planet. We confronted them. They would not submit. We fought. When our battle was done, the Gora were defeated. We exiled them, sent the remnant of the Gora fleet into the army. No reaches of the galaxy. Then we began our own migration, moving around the galaxy in the opposite direction of the Kora. Captain, you have heard our words. Now you have a decision to make. Submit to us, the Urquan Kazemza or face our wrath.
So quite similar to the Kora, but instead of killing every single type of sentient life, they're just going to enslave it. Although you consider us the enemy, these conclusions are flawed. We are your salvation. We bring peace. A peace built upon our social framework, imposed upon your planet. A new world order in which your prosperity and security are assured by the Urquan. We will protect you from the hazards of this hostile universe, from dangers so hideous, your simple mind cannot imagine their dark scope. Today, we are the enemy. In time, this will change. Soon, you will come to understand the boon of slavery we force upon you, and then you will revere and even love us for this gift. There's something about the way they say what they say that makes me believe them a tiny bit, but I'm not going to take their word for it just yet. For now, let's just take the flagship to battle and show them how it's done. Look at these. Auto-tracking cannons. You can't beat it. Look at that. They had no chance. And Lord 999, his companion Lord 666, shouldn't have exactly the same treatment. Look at that. Take it down in two, two shots. Easily done. And I like the, the speed at which we restore battery as well. That's pretty good. But there we go, 750 RUs for free, thank you very much. And we've got another group of Urquan here, who also want to attack us. Which ones will these be? It's gonna be... More Kitzelta. Human, you have ignored our commands, and now you will be punished. They still haven't really told us why they're so keen to get rid of us, really. So let's just answer them again. You have intruded upon the battleground of our doctrinal conflict with the Korah. This is not tolerable. We must maintain our concentration on this war. We must win. Should we lose the consequences to you and all of us sentient life in this part of the galaxy? would be very grave. Since you have refused to depart willingly, it appears that we must eliminate you ourselves. Well, I would have preferred if they didn't attack us, but now that I think about it, if the Korra win the doctrinal conflict and get the power to rule this part of the galaxy, then they'll be able to destroy all sentient life. So in a way, the Urquan are kind of protecting us. Still, not my favourite way of being safe. I'd rather have both of the Urquan, uh, Selzer and Korra be destroyed. Um, but at the same time, it's probably best if we do leave the Urquan to destroy the Korra. Having said that, I did just destroy four Selzer ships. So I hope that doesn't change too much. But... You know what, I think I've lost quite a lot of crew from that battle because that guy hit me with quite a few fusion blasts. Um, so I'm probably going to use a quasi portal here to get the heck out of here. They're probably wondering who the hell's ripping them all up. But um, I'm now going to head um, towards uh, Earth again because I want to go back and refuel um, and get more crew. So I'll go back to Centauri and I'm thinking that uh, I want to go and explore a few places while the kind of you know, doing not too much right now. Definitely want to go and explore Vela, which is where we came from. Um, so that would be something to do. But first of all, um, but you can see the Pekunk are definitely moving. So um, I'm going to have to find out why they're doing that at some point. And um, we head off to Sol now. Head back to the Starbase and see if the Commander, Commander Hayes, has got any more news for us, hopefully something good, unlike like the Spathy, just kind of running away. I wouldn't like any more news like that. Hopefully not. Ah, Captain, I'm glad you're back. So Be no news at all. There, Captain. Better than bad news, I guess. So, let's um, 
get some more fuel on our ship. I'm really happy with the way the three dynamos and Shiva furnaces refueling our ship in battle, our combat batteries, and the two Hellbull cannons are just really good, and so are the tracking devices as well. Wondering if I want to add a extra Shiva furnace instead of a, a tracking device. Wonder if two would be enough, but for now I'm just going to leave the three on there. Um, refuel and recrew. Didn't lose any crew in any of my um, other ships, so I'm just going to refuel. Uh, sorry, recrew the main flagship, the Nova Mace, and head out back into hyperspace to probably go towards Vela now. I definitely want to go and find out what's going on in Vela because of course Unsavolt is where we came from. That was in the Vela star system so let's have a look at the star map. Um, let's type in Vela. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna autopilot my way to Vela. So basically um, I want to go to Vela because I want to see if I can talk to anyone there, talk to any people, see if they've got any information. Um, maybe they found some more precursor, um, you know, artifacts and more precursor technology down in that um, big factory. Maybe they can give us some cool ships or something. Uh, they won't be able to give us those ships if they do have any because we've got a full um, group that we can just go and sell those off fox ships. Um, but here we come, we're coming up to Vela. And we go very close. Oh, this isn't, this isn't real. Where's Vela? Is that the other? Maybe it's the other star. Hang on. Vela, Zeman. Oh, it's probably that. It's probably that really close one then. So Vela's very close to another star. That's probably the closest stars. So I'm guessing this is Vela here. Looks like yeah, Vela. Okay. Uh, oh dear, I can see a slave shield. That's not good. Oh no, you've got to be joking me. I came all this way, and there's a slave shield. Oh, but there's an Urquan here. Let's talk to him. I can't believe Unsavolt has been slave shielded, but anyway, you'll we'll talk to this guy. So, the offspring has returned to its nest. When you left this system, our ship was near enough to detect your translation into hyperspace. Though we lost your hyperspace spore, we were able to backtrack your path here to this star system. And what did we find? An outlaw culture. Humans outside of a slave shield. You will note that this oversight has been rectified. Now we shall finish the job. To be honest, I'm not so sure about that, um Mr. Urquan Kazerza, Mr. Lord 412, you're gonna you're gonna go down. You're gonna learn what it's like to be utterly decimated. So, here we go with the Hellball cannons. Oh we got one a couple of shots on me though. Oh buddy I took him down, look at that. I lost quite a lot of crew, but he lost all of his crew, so I guess he ended up in the worst state. 375 RU, doesn't hurt, but um, it is a shame that um, Unterwald has been slave shielded. Um, never mind. At least he didn't find out where Earth was. That would that could have been a disaster. But I guess we're going to leave Vela now, since it's not really much use. But um, probably want to get a bit more of information now, since we've kind of done most of the quests and most of the things we can do so far. So I'm going to see if I can use the Hyperwave Caster. Doesn't seem to be working. I think the Melnorm it does take a while for the Melnorm to sometimes come. So we'll just use it again. And just okay. Maybe we'll just wait around for a bit, see if the Melnorm may show up, and if they don't, we'll just head back to Earth and try and find the Melnorm somewhere else. Here they are. I can see a ship approaching. Hopefully, it is the Melnorm. Doesn't look to be too quick. I'm just going to save the game just in case. Um, so, just waiting for the ship to arrive. Definitely not a probe, definitely not quick enough to be a probe, but here we go. And it this is the Melnorm. very morning, I was just saying to subordinate Ogre, Fee, hi, fo, fum, I smell the feet of a huge human. <laughs> we laughed and laughed 
What a synchronicity. <laughs> now, what can we do for you today? Well, we've got enough um, credits to buy three more pieces of information, so we'll just go down the line again. Uh, I accidentally clicked on to sell, but we don't have anything to sell because we haven't got any bio data. Um, so let's make some purchases. I would like to buy information. How wonderful, Captain. First of all, information about current events. Dear Quan, are presently at war with a race called the Kura. They are fighting within a large, spherical region of space, centered around the Craterist star group. Although it is probably too early to tell, it would appear that the Kura are winning. Well, that's probably not a good thing. Anyway, now we need some useful data on alien races. The Urad are presently attacking the Pekonk in the Lakeli and Kruger constellations. These beings have slavish devotion to their dark gods Dogar and Kazan, which in the past few years has been used against them by the Unga. If you need to manipulate the Urad, we suggest you discover the Ungar's technique and duplicate it. That probably does mean that we can use the Ungar caster to trick the Ilrath into thinking that we are Dogar and Kazon. That would be a pretty fun thing to do. But now, historical information. Irkwan evolved on a harsh planet orbiting a star outside this region of space. They were solitary predators, like your brain mantis captain, or polar bear, who had a very limited set of social behaviors, most of which dealt with sex. Since they had to compete for survival against many physically superior species, the Urquan evolved intelligence and tool use in much the same way as your own species. The Urquan also learned to master their fierce territoriality to build a cooperative planetary culture. When the Urquan were discovered by the Taeo, they had just begun exploring their solar system in crude atomic vehicles. Although the Irkwan attacked what they thought to be an invader, the Taero were patient. They explained the purpose of the sentient milieu and offered the Irkwan membership. The Irkwan recognized the benefits that such a system provided and once more conquered the hunting beast within themselves to become cooperative, productive members of the milieu. This lasted for several thousands of years. Well, that would be some quite nice information, but unfortunately the, both the Korra and the Kazurza had already told us that, so not quite as useful. Um, but I'm just going to fill up on a little bit of fuel. Um, I've got 13 credits left, so I might as well use all of those credits to buy some fuel. Just an extra 13 fuel, why not? Fine enough. To uh, our trade items. Yes, I know to any credits. credits. I think it's because I've just run out of credits. So. He's just telling me all this stuff. So, goodbye, Mr. Greenish, and we will hopefully see you later.